if you've got something to say about this or anything in Portugal, let's talk about it and let's, let's do an interview for the Good Morning Portugal radio show. I'd love to talk to you about these and any other things that are important to you. This, is a, this show is, is a community resource. It's, it's not meant to be moaning and groaning and blaming and shaming. It's meant to be about having a fantastic life here in Portugal. And obviously the environmental debate and politics and the economics need to come into that. You know, we're not, it's not a Pollyanna show where everything's wonderful although at times it does feel like that. Um, there are times when you think, what on earth are we doing to ourselves and the planet? And what can we do about it more constructively? So there you go. That's uh, some weather and some news for you this morning. Your comments, as I've said there, are more than welcome. So let's move on, shall we? Shall we take a look at the Casa, Casa do Dia, the uh, property of the day? And this is from a blog post I wrote a little while ago. I'm reminded that this might be... A dream home for somebody thinking, you know what? I've had enough of this. I'm going to get up sticks. I'm going to sell all my stuff and move away to a cabin in the woods because that's pretty much what this is, right? I shared with you a ruin yesterday in central Portugal near the lovely town with its wonderful swimming uh, beach, river beach in Goish. Now we move further east to a place where a lot of people sell. The, the, the land and property is, is, is certainly cheaper over Castelo Branco Way. Uh, this is close to Fundao as well, which is a place that needs watching. I think it's a very visionary, it'd be great to interview him actually. I understand there's a very visionary mayor or civic leader over in Fundao who wants people to come. And that's a great attitude, isn't it? To have people come and regenerate. This is what Glenn was talking about on the interview I did yesterday, is how there is a slow death in central Portugal of of community society and infrastructure and all, all, all the civic infrastructure. When the cafe goes, it's hard to restart things, you know, in where he lives, where Glenn lives, it went from three cafes to one. When the last one goes, you know, and little opens up down the road and the local shop shuts and all that. And, and it's just old folks and no new, new life coming in and no children being born there. You experience, well, what do we have? We have, we have, Beautiful relics rather than beautiful, vibrant villages in Portugal. I would so love to see a renaissance, a regeneration, because it's such a, it seems like a, you know, and I do realise I've got my rose-tinted spectacles on, but it does strike me as being an appropriate way to live. And I've got to say harder as well, you know, that's, it's true that, that you know, it's, it's to, to go back to living the way of our grandparents is hard work by our standards. But I think it has also, there are ways to make it easier than our grandparents, our metaphorical grandparents, that generation um, would have had to put up with here on the land. There, there are some great improvements that, that could be implemented, and it needs discussion, it needs conversation, it needs investment, and it needs awareness. Anyway, let's get back to this uh, property, Casa do Dia, and it's called Roots Farm is the name of this place. If you go to Good Morning Portugal, the blog, you can see a beautiful picture of it, which I will post anyway later on. Um, ever wanted to get away from it all? This is your cabin in the woods opportunity. We've all been there, haven't we? Had enough of the rat race, got sick of too much month and not enough money, thought that there must be more to life than the treadmill of making ends meet, and even been inspired by the likes of Thoreau with his invocation of life beyond mere living. Check this out. This is what uh, Thoreau said. Thoreau, Thoreau, I went to the woods because I wished to live deliberately to front only the essential facts of life and see if I could not learn what it had to teach and not, when I came to die, discover that I had not lived. I did not wish to live what was not life. Living is so dear. Nor did I wish to practice resignation unless it was quite necessary. I wanted to live deep and suck out all the marrow of life. Isn't that wonderful? And um, I'm positioning, presenting this place as an opportunity to do just that. I know I have wanted to do what Thoreau was talking about there. In fact, that urge would not be silenced and powered me onward for 10 years. Uh, I'm read it may sound a bit weird because I'm reading my own blog now. <laughs> Eventually taking a chance on the life I now live here in Portugal. Yes, this is a 10 year dream and been here a couple of years now. That said, it seems I'm a bit of a lightweight. Uh, although the middle of nowhere was where I thought I was headed, here in Portugal, we've settled in a small town. We're in Korea and not in a rural hideaway like this. Although I do see these properties and I think, actually, yes, yes, one day. Uh, those fab folks at Pure Portugal recently helped me realize just how domesticated and urban I've become. 
This beauty of a property and plot, Roots Farm, nearly had me dusting down my loincloth and whittling knife with its stunning remote location, off-grid credentials, and abundant food production. I'm looking at a picture of it now. It's beautiful. Can you picture yourself here? Maybe it's like an away-from-it-all spot the ball, where you put an X, where you see yourself harvesting fresh fruit and veg, sipping some freshly squeezed juice, with a juicer powered by solar, of course, or just soaking up a few rays in remote tranquility. For 75,000 euros, yes, 75,000, for all of this I'm about to tell you about, you can live near overhead free with just a local property tax of, get this, 28 euros a year. It's not extortionate, is it? Come and collect your rubbish for that. I know I wouldn't. This off-grid gem generates its own power and has its own water source as well. Five by five meter wooden cabin is insulated, double glazed, and has a large log burner slash oven combo plus a large veranda looking out over amazing valley views. I've told you enough, haven't I? You know, someone is, is going to buy this soon because it's so, it's so beautiful. Adjoining are a workshop and bathroom and above are 12 solar panels. And it's that time of year, isn't it, when you think, oh, sorry, I'm going, yes, that sounds wonderful. 75,000 euros, amazing. Nearby are extensive ruins and the current owner has Earthship Academy plans drawn up that have been submitted to the local council, the intention being to have a totally legal and completely self-sufficient homestead. If you don't know what Earthships are, look it up. It, they are an incredible way of building really nice and curvy and natural looking and reusing old materials and taking nature into account blah de blah there's an outdoor kitchen space composting toilets and outside showers as well as a borehole fruit and nut trees can be found in the just under a hectare of land set over three terraces thought to have once been a cherry farm oh, the old cherry farm here you're 30 minutes from the progressive town of fundal which i mentioned and 45 minutes from Castella branco and spain the place even has its own website and social media pages because plans are in place for its use as a retreat center. Yes, this, folks, is a dream property with much of the dreaming already converted into reality. As you'll see in Roots Farm, the movie, there is a movie, Roots Farm, where the owner walks you through the site. It's, it's really nice. It really nice. It's really wonderful to keep your imagination flowing. And as I say there, much of the dream has been co- converted into reality. And... Um, it seems a shame they're not staying there with all the hard work they've done, and I don't know what their circumstances are, but they have made it so much easier for anybody who wants to live that sort of life there at Roots Farm. So there you go. There's our Casa do Dia today, the wonderful cabin in the woods towards Castella Branco, 45 minutes. Well, that's a long way, isn't it? Nearer to Fundal, um, central Portugal, anyway, is what you need to know. Beautiful location, and uh, the listing for that will be on Good Morning portugal.com the website and uh, there'll be a little podcast about it if you want to share that with other people